Okay, uh, Vero Beach will mark its 90th anniversary this year. It was incorporated June 10, 1919, while part of St. Lucie County. Vero received a post office in 1891. The first town layout was done in April 1913. In January 1925, island property was annexed when Vero became Vero Beach and was designated the county seat of the newly formed Indian River County. This occasion obviously deserves celebrating. Um, now, if I can have Mrs. Joan Edwards, who has spent many, many hours letting a sampling of the many pioneer families know about our event, if she could come forward and say a few words and introduce each pioneer family that will be speaking tonight, and someone from each family will say a word or two. So first, I'd like to introduce Marvin Carter. Marvin is from a long line of surveyors and engineers. His grandfather, R.D. Carter, was brought in to plan, survey, ditch, and drain a swamp. That is now our city. That was completed in 1913, and Carter and Associates will have their 100th anniversary in 2013. 2011. 2011, I'm corrected. Thank you, Joan. The legacy of the Carter family <clears throat> here in Vero Beach begins with my grandfather, Robert Daniel Carter, <clears throat> founder of Carter Searches and most commonly called R.D. by friends and acquaintances and affectionately known to his grandchildren as Grandan. Due to the time constraints, he's the only one I will direct my comments about here today. Before coming to Florida, he served as an assistant county engineer for Henderson County, North Carolina. R.D. first came by train to Vero Beach in 1911, which at that time was still a part of St. Lucie County. As an engineer retained to perform a preliminary survey and inspection of a 55,000 acre parcel located partially within and around what is now the mainland portion of the city of Vero Beach to determine if the area could be drained and developed. Following a favorable engineering report by R.D. Carter on the viability for such a project, the Indian River Farms Company purchased the 55,000 acres for three dollars an acre and began the planning and design of the original town and Vero and the surrounding Indian River Farms Company subdivision. Following the acquisition, R.D. Carter became the resident engineer for the Indian River Farms, reestablishing section lines and performing the initial topographic surveys and was involved in the design and construction of the drainage system in and around Vero Beach area. Like most of the Pioneer families represented here today, life in Vero Beach and Indian River County has been a blessing for the Carter family. Next we have the sweetest little woman you could meet. Uh, Helen McWilliam Glenn represents the many McWilliam family members still in our area. She is here with her two brothers. My father, Alex McWilliam Sr., was a wounded World War I veteran from Cleveland, Ohio, when he came to Vero in 1919. He came to develop a winter resort on an island in the river. The resort was to be named Riamar. He arrived on a Saturday night in June and stayed at the Sleepy Eye Lodge. He decided to walk downtown after a while and he found the streets lined with cars and the stores bright with electric lights and filled with shoppers. He decided maybe this is not such a small town after all. But the next day, he found out that there were two 25-watt generators privately owned that provided the electricity for just two hours on Saturday night. <laughs> And there was no bridge to the part of the island that he was supposed to develop. So he hired a boat and rode across the river and found a walking trail from the river to the ocean. And he said that it was the most beautiful place he had ever seen. He brought his workers and his equipment by barge every day to build Riamar. And when he finished the Riamar golf course, 
he decided to join the Mosquito Control Board. <laughs> Soon he discovered that St. Lucie County did not spend tax money collected in Vero on any improvements in Vero, especially not mosquito control. And so he became one of the leaders in the move to create a new county. He led a group of 130 citizens on a train to Tallahassee, where he met with Uncle Tony Young and Attorney Jim Vosell, and they met with the Governor James Martin and persuaded the governor to divide the huge St. Lucie County up into three parcels. One was to be named Indian River, one was to rename, remain St. Lucie County, and the third was to be named Martin County after the governor. Well, this is the end of my time, but uh, this is part of our family history. But if you live in Vero Beach or Indian River County, it's part of your history too. Thank you. I'm ready to cry. This is so wonderful. Our next speaker is Alma Lee Loy, a well-known name in Vero Beach. Thank you so much, Joan. You are way too kind. What an exciting event in the history of Vero Beach. Good afternoon to each and every one gathered here this afternoon to celebrate the 90th birthday of Vero Beach. Without each of you, pioneers, pioneer descendants, residents, and visitors, we would not be having a celebration. So thank you to all of you for your many contributions to this wonderful city. Our father, George W. Lloyd, arrived in Vero Beach in 1926. He was employed by the I, by I.M. Waters haberdashery of Fort Pierce. As the story goes, Daddy walked in one day, mid-morning. The then manager, the one employee, walked out for a cup of coffee and was never seen again. <laughs> George Loy and two of his children, George Jr., and I believe <clears throat> helped set the tone for the growth of the trades or retail business in downtown Vero Beach. All three of us were believers in the vital role of a chamber of commerce in a developing city and we all three served on the board of directors. When our father brought his beautiful young bride to Vero Beach he also brought a lady with a beautiful voice. During the 1930s and the 1940s, Mother used her talents to entertain and to build and strengthen music appreciation throughout the city and the county. Daddy was the first volunteer director of the First Baptist Church Choir and Mother was an active member of that choir for some 53 years. I had invited Buck Vosell to speak for the Vosell family and unfortunately he had an out-of-town deposition to do and business comes first. Uh, the name Vosell stands for the Legal Eagles of the community. James Vosell played an important role in the county's founding in 1925. He held state posts and was friends of governors. He challenged the city of Vero Beach for a client at one time when they wanted to have an office on Route 60. Now that area is our commercial zone to the community. In closing, as the spokesman for the Loy family, we are proud and grateful to have been a part of the first 90 historic years in Vero Beach. It's been a wonderful journey. Thank you all for celebrating with us.